When you're out in the mountains, when you're out hiking, do you just find yourself at night in the cold, tossing and turning, putting on an extra thermal, putting on that fleece jacket and just thinking, why do I have to do this? My sleeping bag should be keeping me warm. Well, if you have, you've come to the right place. I've got over 30 years experience with sleeping bags and I've been using all different types over the years. And today we're just gonna have a look at a few and what I think is a good all round sort of sleeping bag. And we may even get into quilt. Your sleeping system is a crucial component of your hiking kit. So let's get into it. Let's have a look at sleeping bags. Hi there everyone, Mauser here. Welcome back to the channel where we look at the best hiking tips, trips and gear. Over the past 30 years, I've slowly refined my sleep system and it's now at a point of comfort and practicality with a touch of luxury, I think. And the most crucial part of that system, well today in part one of my sleep system series, the sleep system series, we're going to find out. So if you're curious, let's dive straight in. To truly appreciate the sleep system I swear by today, let's take a step back in time to the early days of my hiking adventures. Picture this, a young uni student sleeping on one of those old roll up blue foam sleeping pads, you know the ones I mean. It was basic and uncomfortable, but affordable. And it was the start of something bigger, a dream that sparked the pursuit of the ultimate hiking sleep system. This is just still just having a little sleep in over there. He looks pretty, pretty comfy right now. Now a quick note about sleeping bags, if you have a down sleeping bag, that's the one with the feathers in it, then care and cleaning of that sleeping bag is crucial to the life of your bag. We will go in depth on that on another video. Down the track we will show you how to clean your sleeping bag, I'll also go into how I store all my gear. And if you want to see those videos, then make sure that you like this video and you subscribe, sign up, subscribe and you'll get notified about when we've got a new video. Better yet, hit the little bell icon down there as well and you will be notified with a little message that we've got a new video live so you don't miss a thing. Anyway, back to the sleeping bags. So, back to sleeping bag. Now, one of the true veterans of my hiking kit, one of the sleeping bags that's probably been with me for the longest period of time is one of my favourite. It's the Western Mountaineering Ultralight Sleeping Bag. This thing has been a companion on my trip since 2011 when I undertook a big 13 day trip of the full Arthur Ranges in southwest Tasmania with my mate Walzer. Walzer bought the same bag at the same time and his is still going strong also. Now weighing in at 1050 grams, 1.05 kilograms, which is this much in the imperial system, this thing is ready to brave temperatures down to as low as sort of minus seven degrees. It's beautifully warm, it's thick. Look at that, still going very strong. And I think that is testament to Western Mountaineering's sort of unbeatable quality and durability of the products they make. It's a fantastic option here in Australia, especially in Tasmania. It's got a great warmth to weight ratio at a thousand grams a kilo. Um, the warmth this gives you on those cold trips is fantastic. And on that trip in 2011, it was really cold. It snowed the whole time. First trip out for this bad boy and it held up really well. I mean, look at this thing, it's still going strong. It is now nearly 13 years old, 12 years old, still warm and toasty, it still lofts up really, really nicely. I mean, look at that loft. That is good loft, look at that, look at that. And I'm sweating in here right now. This is a beautiful sleeping bag. Like I said, Walter still uses his. I still use this occasionally. My kids take this hiking now. It's a fantastic sleeping bag and it's got a long life left in it yet. And this has done a lot of trips. The great thing about this is this bag is still available on the Western Mountaineering website. I'll also find a few other links and leave them below, but it is a great sleeping bag, a great option if you want something that's really warm and it really, in the scheme of things, isn't that heavy at one kilo. So overall, I think the Ultralight is a great three season sleeping bag. If you're going in winter, you may want something a bit warmer or you could throw in a liner, something like the one that I use, like the Thermolite Reactor Fleece Liner. That is a something from sea to summit. I'll put the weight right there, but that is a good liner and it adds about three or four degrees warmth to the bag. Another option if you wanted to get down to a comfort, extreme comfort level of around minus 10 degrees, I'd probably take that. But if you're going in deep snow that sort of thing then check out another video for winter camping scenarios now as i was saying western mountaineering i make they make great sleeping bags and so great that around 10 years ago when i was looking for a lighter weight option to use in the summer that i didn't need that extra warmth of the ultralight i ended up biting the bullet and getting a western mountaineering megalite
So this Megalite, which I'm in now, only weighs 795 grams. That is this much in Imperial. And if you're not going to be in real cold conditions, this is a great lightweight sleeping bag option. Rated to minus two degrees Celsius. We're talking Celsius today, people. And it's one that I used on those summer trips when I was a guide on the overland track for the odd season there. It was a great option, lighter option to take on those trips. Now there's nice little touches with the Western Mountaineerings. There's this sort of thing here where you will have the name of the people that sewed it together for you. So this one was sewed together by Bellum, Bellum and Romy. So thanks guys for sewing my sleeping bag for me. Very nice. This thing, yeah, like I said, it's 10 years old. It's maintaining its lock well. It's got a long life left in it yet. And the beauty of someone like me who has four kids is we've got all these extra sleeping bags. So the kids use them now as well for their trips, their school trips, that sort of thing. And they're a good, solid sleeping bag. I've got this as a backup option if I need it. If I change my mind, I've got a bit of variety. But it's a good summer sleeping bag. You could probably get away with it. And the shoulders are summer. Uh, if you had to, again, with that sleeping bag liner, the Reactor sleeping bag liner that I use. But yeah, that's your Western Mountaineering. Now next up is my all-time favourite sleeping bag. Now I know I raved about the Western Mountaineering and the Ultralight and the Megalite, but this one I think takes the cake it. And it is what I've used until recently if I'm taking a sleeping bag, this is what I take. And it is called the Patagonia 850 Down Sleeping Bag. Now there's a lot of things to love about this sleeping bag. Weighing in at 1,025 grams, 1.025 kilograms, which is that much in pound imperial scenario. And like the ultralight, it is rated to minus seven degrees, but it just feels, it just gives me a better warmth than the ultralight does, I think. So I take it on those trips where it's looking to be really cold. And I know that when I take this on a trip, it is ready to cocoon me in warmth and comfort. So I've had this bag for around five or six years. And in 2018, I was handing off on a very cold trip, looking cold. It actually got down to around minus 10 on that trip. And in this thing, I was super Super warm i didn't get cold i did layer up inside the sleeping bag with some thermals and things it served me very very well on that trip and it has ever since when i got this i fell in love with it straight away and what i particularly love about this thing is not only it's got the double drawstring thing happening here so you can get right really sort of right down like this and i have been like this before in my tent and beautiful warm I also love the front zipper. How good is that? On a sleeping bag, having that front zipper is fantastic. It means you can sit in the bag, across your legs, it's got a zipper at both ends, and it's just a good thing when you're stuck in a tent for a day or so, having a rest day or in the rain or in the cold, this thing is fantastic to sit around in the tent in, better than any other sleeping bag that I have used. Now, unfortunately, I cannot find this one online anymore. Patagonia still do make sleeping bags, but they're not, it doesn't look like they're making this particular one rated to this level of warmth. The others are all going to minus sort of two degrees Celsius. Maybe you can buy it in the States. I will try and leave a link below if I can find something. I had to get this one from Patagonia in America as it was when I purchased it. I saw it, I read the reviews at the time back in 2017, 2018, and the only place it was available was in the States from Patagonia there. So I ended up getting Patagonia Australia to bring it in for me. They got it in and very happy with it. It's been an awesome bag and I'll have this for years also. Um, yeah, but it doesn't look like you can get it anymore. If you find one and you're looking for a good sleeping bag, I love it. I think it's a great sleeping bag. Now, while I do love a good sleeping bag, those last like, couple great sleeping bags, love them all. But over the last couple of years, as pack weight, the overall weight of my pack has become more of a concern for me and I've been trying to find every little weight saving I can while still living in luxury. You know I love to live in luxury, I do. It's just great, I love it. So I'm trying to find little weight savings and one thing I have done in the last couple of years is move to a quilt. A quilt. Yes, you heard that right, a quilt. Now, this was not an easy decision for me. I first heard about quilts maybe seven years ago on the hiking life blog that i've talked about before cam honan big epic through hiker backpacker he had used the katabic gear palisade quilt on quite a few occasions and recommended quilts and i just found myself every now and again coming back looking at his blog looking at the quilts going to the katabic gear website katabicgear.com i guess it is i think i'll put the link down below but i was checking out their website looking at them and there was one that caught my eye. But I just had this lingering question in my head. If I go to a quilt, am I going to be warm enough? Now, what do you ask? You may ask, 
why go to a quilt? Well, with quilts, the way they work is they're like a blanket that you wrap around yourself and attach to your sleeping pad and there's no bottom underneath that you're lying on because if you're lying in a sleeping bag, you're crushing the down that's underneath you and it's not really doing anything in terms of warmth. So a quilt eliminates that area where you would normally be lying on the down and just has a, a hole in the back of the bag or in the back of the quilt. It also doesn't have a hood. You just have the neck collar and this one took my eye and this one was the Katabic Gear Alsec quilt. So I ended up biting the bullet and hitting purchase, bought myself a Katabic Gear Alsec quilt. Now this thing, I've been using it quite a bit. It's a game changer, I think. It weighs in at 655 grams, rated to minus five degrees Celsius, and it is a beautiful little product. Now at 655 grams, this thing is about 140 grams lighter than that Megalite sleeping bag, and it's about three degrees Celsius warmer. And just look at it while I've got it on here, loft it up, very nice it's got a neck collar which is tightening so you can keep out the drafts it tightens right down and has been really good on the last few trips i've taken it on so you can see the back of the quilt it has that gap there where your body is exposed and the idea of that is that your sleeping pad which is an important component when you're using a quilt will keep you warm providing insulation to that area the other beauty of these things is that you can just use them as a blanket on those warmer nights and i know you can do that with a sleeping bag as well but this is just a bit easier and you can regulate the airflow much better, I think. One thing with quilts is they have an attachment system to help you attach them to the sleeping pad that you are using. And the Katavik ones come with a couple of options. There's this little clip, which attaches via this cord, which I'll flash up on the screen. Uh, there's also this clip option, which attaches with some straps as well. I generally use these orange strings with this and attach them and you can lock it tight down with these clips that don't let the rope slip. You can get quite a tight warmth enclosed system happening with your sleeping mat all in harmony, all as one when you are sleeping with this thing. It's a great little unit. Again, if you had to, you could take your something like your Thermalite reactor inner if you wanted to as a secondary layer. Haven't had to do that. And I've had this thing down to probably minus three degrees so far, minus three degrees Celsius, that is. And I haven't had any troubles. And that is with a t-shirt and underwear on, but that is with no extra thermals or anything. I've been fine in this. The only time you have a bit of trouble is if the straps loosen a bit and at the night you might lift up the side of the sleeping bag. A bit of air can sometimes get in, just you feel a little bit of a draft, but hey, I can put up with that for the weight saving that I'm getting with this quilt i can't see a situation where i won't be taking this quilt especially on those big long trips I've got a big 10 day coming up next summer this thing will be coming for sure to just give me that maximum weight saving i'll have my nice sleeping mat we're doing a video about sleeping mats as well that's coming this will be coming with my good sleeping pad now i have tried to convince my hiking buddies that they should move to a quilt as well they're not quite there yet. Maybe one day they'll just see the light and come across. But if you've got any uncertainty about switching to a sleeping pad, I suggest you stick with what you've got for the time being. It was a big leap of faith for me. I am still getting used to it. I like it, but it does take some getting used to. Because there is no hood, you do need to take a decent beanie. Maybe we could do a beanie video at some stage. Maybe we will. So there's factors like that to consider as well. If it was a winter trip, this would not be coming. I would be taking the Patagonia bag with my Thermalite reactor. Hopefully that would be enough for me by the time I put on my extra layers. So there you have it. That is just a bit of an overview of my sleeping bag and quilt journey to date. We've got something there for everyone. We've got our Western Mountaineering Ultralight. That's a warm sleeping bag, good light option to take on those long trips. If you want an all rounder sort of sleeping bag, nice option, side zip, same with the Megalite, side zip, bit lighter and a great summer bag. Then you've got the Patagonia 850 Down sleeping bag, which I cannot find anywhere anymore. Great bag. Just wanted to show you that one. It was a good one. And then we've got the Katabic Gear Alsec quilt, which is my new favorite little sleeping piece to take on a hike. I think it's fantastic. But if you want to stick with the sleeping bags, I recommend the Western Mountaineerings very highly. Great sleeping bags. And there you go. That's what we have for you today. Next time, we are looking at sleeping mats. Once that video is out, it'll be right there. It'll be there for you. The sleeping mats video where we're going through my pads, my therm rest, that sort of thing is what we're going to be doing next time. But now I want to hear from you. What sleeping bag are you using? What have you found good and where are you using it? Do you use a quilt? How do you like the quilt? If you're using a quilt, I'd love to hear from you. 
love to hear if you've got any tips on how to use a quilt and also which quilt you're using drop a comment below get the conversation started would love to hear from you in the meantime yeah, check that video out see what you think and i will see you on the next one it's time to go cook some dinner here in australia and i hope you have a great weekend a great week whatever part of the week you're at have a good one i will see you very soon and i'll be back next week with another video till then i'll see you later and bye bye see ya